The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Johnson's house. Who do you think is there and is heading this way? A couch thief? <laughs> now, Luke, this is no time for Johnson. The county tax man is coming. Do you know you have to pay taxes on your furniture in this county? No, I can't say as I did. Uh, Dunnest thing I ever heard about, and I ain't gonna pay it. Well, I never heard of it neither, Grandpa, but if the law says you gotta pay taxes, you gotta pay it. Doggone it! This furniture come from West Virginia, and I ain't gonna pay no California tax on it. You can't do a thing about it, Grandpa. I can, too. They can't charge you no taxes on something you ain't got, can they? Well, I guess not, but... Never mind the butts. Get over there on the other end and help me, Luke. Go on. <laughs> Hurry when you look. You'll be here in a half hour. Now, wait. Now, look, Grandpa. Now, wait. Put that down. Now, put it down. We ain't gonna hide nothing. Sit down. Now, sit down on the couch. Now, look, Grandpa. Sit down, catch your breath, and listen to us. It's again the law not to pay your taxes. That's number one. Now, number two... I know you can count. Get to the point. Number three, the furniture ain't all yours. Some of it belongs to Luke and me. Things my mother gives us. There's one thing you two don't seem to understand, and that is that I'm trying to help you. <laughs> if the law says we have to pay taxes, then we've got to pay them. Hiding furniture in the lock will only get us in trouble, yeah, Grandpa. Now, just simmer down, Grandpa. Forget it. When the tax man comes, Grandpa, show him around the place and let him look at whatever he wants to see. That's Flory. Come on, Luke. Where are you two off to? Oh, we're just going to go do a little shopping in town with Flory. See you later, Grandpa. And, and remember, Grandpa, honesty is the best policy. Don't go recycling any of your poetry on me. <laughs> I ain't a milk and a cow. Get on the other end of the couch and help me move it out of here. What are we gonna put it? Get anywhere, put it at the haystack. Where else would we put it? I'm not sure if that makes sense or not. What are you gonna plug in the lamp? <laughs> Look, we ain't only a moving this furniture, we're a hiding it. Now go on, get down the end of the couch, dear. Senor Ampa, why are we hiding the furniture in the haystack? I know you was going to ask that question sooner or later. Seems every time I try to help my family, all I get is a lot of numbers and questions. Yeah, but why? Well, now look. You see all that furniture just as far as the eye can see? Now, where'd that come from? West Virginia. Write that down in your mind. Si, senor. The trees that the furniture was made out of was grown in West Virginia. The lumber was milled in West Virginia. And the carpenter fellow that put the furniture together was born and raised in Smoky Corners, West Virginia. Now, I'm going to ask you one simple question, and I want one straightforward answer. What kind of furniture is it? Living room. <laughs> Geninius West Virginia furniture. Now, do you think it's right I should pay a California tax on it? Well, it's a nice story, and you tell it nice. But if it's the law, it's the law. I don't think I'd better help you. Really? Won't you tell me here a while back that the lady friend of yours, Conchita, had an awful temple? See, si, senor, like a tiger. And who was it you took to the tamale festival last night? Dolores, wasn't it? I will take the heavy end. <laughs> tax revenue or any 
going to see this kind of shit. <laughs> Senor Grandpa, there's still more pieces in the house. Where are we going to hide them? Well, that's Luke and Kay stuff. They want to pay a tax on it, but me, I'm a hide mine. <laughs> now, come on. Let's fella be here in a minute. We forgot the guard, John Chen. Well, I'll put it in the haystack. Well, hurry up. Senor Grandpa, car. That's the tax man. Well, what would I do with the table? He's going to see me. Here, give it to me. Give me that bucket off the porch. <laughs> well, you never get the table in this bucket. <laughs> I can still see the table. <laughs> it ain't a table now. That's a bird bath. <laughs> Well, good morning. This is the McCoy place? That's right. I'm Amos McCoy, owner and operator. I'm Earl Wells, your county tax assessor. Well, more power to you. This is my foreman, the peanut. I do? What do you do? I'm here to determine your tax for this year. Is it that time already? <laughs> Come along, follow me. I'll show you around the place. Hmm. One walnut table, <laughs> one galvanized iron bucket. <laughs> Furniture, have you? Oh, uh, no. You see, it's an old McCoy sin. Uh, have a few things, but good quality. There is an interesting arrangement a footstool, table, a lamp, but no chair. Well, you see, I'm a farmer. And I'm on my feet all day, and, and my feet's the only part of me gets tired. You are kidding me, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, one of them dining room chairs fits right in the back of the stool there. Dining table seems to be missing. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of people say that, don't they, for peanuts? Every time they sit down for dinner, you see, this is where the family holds meetings. And the chairs are set like this, well, so they can see each other while they're talking. Uh huh. Well, let's see what else you have here. Oh, you've got company, Reverend Bascom. Well, that's nice. Mighty nice. Reverend Bascom? <laughs> Be right out, Reverend. Well, he's hot outside. Why don't you ask the Reverend to come in? Why don't you keep that itchy lot of yappy horse clothes? The Reverend knows he'll get more furniture than this. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Reverend? Good afternoon, Amos. <laughs> Say, you sure picked a bad time to come by. Kate and Luke has done gone to town. Now, of course, if you wanted to hop in your car and drive real fast, you might catch them. They've been gone about an hour. Well, I just came by to talk to Kate about uh, teaching a Sunday school class, but I can see her later. Uh, yeah, that'd be fine later. Uh, I'm terribly thirsty, Amos. Do you have a little glass of lemonade or even a little ice water will do? Well, uh, yeah, Reverend. Uh, set yourself down in the shed a spell, and I'll go fetch a drink. As I drove by, I thought you had a... A lemonade stand on your lawn. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. And I realize now that it's uh, only a bird bath. <laughs> yeah, only a bird bath. <laughs> well, I got just about everything figured out, Mr. McCoy. I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Wells. I'm a water in the river. Is that Earl Wells I hear in there? Shall I start the car for the getaway? I got friends below the border. <laughs> Hello there, Earl. What are you doing out here? Huh? I'm assessing the McCoy properties. Oh, I see. They have a nice place here, haven't they? It's a... Uh... <laughs> What's happened? Well, Reverend, it's kind of hard to see. Your, your, your rocking chair, your, your, your sofa, the, the dining room table, where are they? Well, it's like I say, it's hard to see. <laughs> Amos, is there something you want to tell me? No, Reverend, they ain't. Let me put it this way. Is there something you don't want to tell me? You're getting warm, Reverend. <laughs> I thought so. A little financial problem came up and you had to get rid of some of your furniture, didn't you? Yeah, something financial come by, we had to get rid of it. <laughs> and how like you not to want to say anything about it. Oh, I, I, I understand. Saving your pride in front of a stranger. <laughs> you had a bad potato crop last year, didn't you? Yeah, we did, Reverend, but that didn't have nothing to do with it. Say no more, my son. I want you to know that you are not without friends. I know of one I wish he was with us. <laughs> well, my job is done. Now I'll just submit my assessment and they'll send you a bill. But don't worry, Mr. McCoy. I'll go easy with you. That's mighty neighborly of you. I'll walk with you to your car, Earl. Fine, Reverend. Good day, gentlemen. Be of good cheer, Amos. Thank you, Reverend. 
Oh. What a pity. To sell their furniture, probably to buy food and clothing. They tried to tell me that odd arrangement of furniture was part of their decorative scheme. He's a proud man. Very proud. <laughs> Well, I guess that's just about everything. Say, I think everything is back in place. Thanks, See you Laurie. later, Laurie. And just in time, too. Now, remember, you don't know nothing about what happened here today. See, but maybe I better leave. I think I look guilty. Let me see. Hey, you better leave. Go ahead. Welcome home. Uh, Howdy. <laughs> You're just in time. In time for what? Just in time to say goodbye because I'm leaving. <laughs> What's wrong with Pino? Well, you know how he is. All this makes him feel important to leave. <laughs> Ooh, wee. It sure was hot in town today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you have a good time, though? Mm, a real good time. Uh, oh, by the way, did that tax man come? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he was here. He was a nice fella, too, you know. He looked over everything and said he's going to send us the bill. <laughs> mm, I'm sure glad you didn't try to fool nobody. Uh, don't pay not to pay your taxes. Lou? Huh? Don't chew on that straw. It's a bad habit. No. <laughs> Give me that. But will you look at this sofa? A straw all over it. <laughs> look behind this pillow. Look behind this pillow, too. Well, now, how'd that happen? <laughs> a strong wind blow right clean through the screen. All right, well, I know what you did. You do? I know what you did, and you should be ashamed of yourself. I can explain, Kate. You're the head of the family. You're supposed to be setting a good example. Now, ain't you ashamed? Well, I couldn't help myself. Shaking out your overalls in the living room. <laughs> What happened, Sugar Bay? Well, I went into two stores, the grocer and the drugstore, yeah. and neither one of them would take my money. What? And they both said, pay me when you got it. And I had it, but they wouldn't take it. <laughs> the goddamnest thing I've ever had. Well, maybe they was trying to trap you into one of them charge accounts. You know, so you'll buy things you don't need just to show you can? I don't know. It sure is strange. <laughs> happened today. When I left for school this morning, Kate gave me two sandwiches. One peanut butter and jelly and one peanut butter. That's a good healthy lunch. Well, I no sooner sat down when a bunch of kids started coming up and giving me their sandwiches. Look it. I got a roast beef, American cheese, two hams, peanut butter and lettuce, and a bologna. Hey, and they just give them to you? Yeah. Went to school with two and I came back with six. Hello? Nobody's here. The Pino's speaking. That's right, this is the McCoys, but I'm not one. <laughs> Who? Mr. Wells, the taxman. Uh-huh. See? 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 You will be here in an hour. <laughs> See? Well, there will be somebody here. I'm hanging up my end. <laughs> Pepina! Si, sí, senor Rampa. Who's that lemonade you're supposed to be fixing? It is. Yeah, thank you. Good. I will give you another glass, but I'm saving one for Mr. Wells. Yeah, that's good, yeah. He'll have a hot ride out here from town today. Yeah, it's a hot one today, all right. <laughs> well, can't stay here no longer. There's a lot of work to be done outside. That's <laughs> <laughs> open your lips. Why'd you tell me where? I am going to be firm. I will not leave. You could left the end of that sofa, you'll be on the sweaty end of a sledgehammer in the rock pile. Well, don't you stand there, senor Grandpa, leave. Sure picked the scorcher of a day to walk into the pile. Luke, you walk ten times that far every day, plowing. I'm going to get a drink of water. Oh, get some for me, will you, Luke? <laughs> Grandpa, 
my sofa's gone. And, and his desk is missing. And look there, his rocker's gone. Oh, and look, Grandpa's mantel clock that Grandma gave him. And the dining room table that he brought all the way out here from West Virginia. I better call Sheriff Nielsen right now. Wait a minute, Luke. Wait, don't it strike you kind of funny that, that all of our stuff is still here and the only thing missing is Grandpa's? <laughs> well, just, just look around. What is that? The dining room table, the rocker, the... The, the sofa? desk, the sofa? <laughs> just Grandpa's stuff. Hmm. Now, you don't suppose Grandpa... No, no, he, he promised that he was going to pay them taxes. And... <laughs> Besides, the tax man's already come and gone. Yeah, well, maybe he's coming back. Or maybe they're going to send another one. I wonder where Grandpa put this stuff. Sometimes it's good to make believe you're Grandpa and, and try to think where you might have hit it. I can't think with Grandpa's mind. Sometimes I don't know how Grandpa thinks with it. <laughs> Somebody's here now. Good afternoon, my children. Reverend. Oh, Reverend. Good afternoon. Come on in. I'm glad I found you in. Luke, will you come to my car and give me a hand? I have some clothes for you and a couple of boxes of canned goods. But for us, Reverend, we don't need any... Bless you, my child. You're a proud one. <laughs> Reverend, there must be something wrong. We don't need charity. We're... No, no, no. Don't think of charity as something to be ashamed of. Think more of it as the goodness and kindness of your friends and neighbors. Uh, now, Luke, if you'll just follow yeah, me. Reverend, Reverend, now, look, there's some mistake. Honest, we don't need it. We got the bank loan. We got a real good crop coming up. Yeah. We're in good shape. When I was here before, Amos said you had to part with some of your furniture for financial reasons. Beginning to see the light. First, the grocer won't let me pay. Mm -hmm. then, then little Luke came home with them extra sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. And, and Reverend, did you spread the word around town? Yes, I did. What is this all about, Kate? Yeah, well, uh, Reverend, it's nothing to be concerned about. Uh, but look, maybe we all better sit down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Reverend, I don't uh, exactly <clears throat> know. Uh, Luke, you can tell the Reverend he's our friend. We just best tell him. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Reverend, sir. Uh, Come straight out with it, Luke. Uh, well, Reverend, it's a long and shameful story, but... I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> Reverend, everything you don't see in here belongs to Grandpa. <laughs> so that, Reverend, is what Grandpa has been up to. We feel so ashamed, Reverend. Oh, now, don't be upset. Deep down, Amos is a good man, and I'm certain he'll right whatever wrong he's done. Close the door for pity. You're leaving all the flies in. Now, don't say a word. It makes a man feel better to confess rather than to be caught. Let Amos cleanse his own soul. Oh, Lord, he's like sin. Oh, you <laughs> think I see we get company? Oh, don't worry, Grandpa. Why don't you just come in and set us back? Yeah, we got lots of chairs. Yeah, now, don't you talk about jumping to no conclusion about the furniture. I'll explain to you later. We're not jumping to any conclusions, Grandpa. We're just talking to the Reverend. Yeah, yeah. The Reverend brought us a carload of old clothes and some canned goods. What for? Well, since we had to sell our furniture, the Reverend was good enough to spread the word that uh, us McCoys is a charity case. Charity case? We ain't no charity case. Us McCoys ought to have been able to pay our own way. But having to sell your furniture, Amos. We didn't have to sell the furniture. Why, I was doing... Well, let me explain it this way. Take this room, just as far as the eye can see, it was filled with furniture. And where did we buy the furniture? In West Virginia? That's right. But you're living in California now, Amos. But the trees the furniture was made out of was grown in West Virginia, and the lumber was made in West Virginia, I'm and... I'm the it's here. <laughs> Go on, Amos. Yo, Grandpa, why don't you finish your story to the Reverend? Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Hello Mr. Brown. Good afternoon. Well... Ain't you going to say something? Ain't you going to say the words you sent me up the river for good? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the program.
private conversation. I won't butt in. What I have to say won't take but a minute. It does take long. Put him on. Well, I'm glad to see you're not a proud man, Mr. McCoy. These are brand new, but I think you and yours will find a lot of wear in them. What? I've got some furniture outside, and the county relief agency will be sending you food once a week until you're back on your feet. Relief? Charity? Why, we... we... Well, you're a citizen of this county, aren't you? We take care of our own. That's why you pay taxes. That's just one of the ways we spend our money. Do you mean to tell me that part of the county tax goes to people that, that's in need? Well, of course. Well, that's a fine how to do. Here's me trying to cheat the county, and they're trying to help me. I don't understand. Well, I was a hiding that furniture so I wouldn't have to pay a tax on it. Amen. <laughs> Why, Mr. McCoy? Well, all right, I'm ready to go now, which... I ain't gonna be much help in the rock pile and count him a bag. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. This isn't a jail offense. The county couldn't collect money from you while you were in jail. You mean if I pay up, they leave me go? Why, of course. Well, now, I ain't only gonna pay up my end. I'm gonna pay up Luke and Cage, too. I'm gonna treat you to a tax. <laughs> I guess that about squares me with everybody. I guess I owe you some reverend. Nothing at all, Amos. You paid me when you confessed. Well, it's a pleasure to do business with you, Reverend. <laughs>